last week, the 15th, um, SMS demo for Mike. UI testing. Big. There was something special about this one. Uh, today. Today, demos. I have one. Mike. Two picks. Maybe one Same. PR if we can review it. And one PR. Um then 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 you are not in one and we imagine the PR. Uh object code fifteen three. So here this one. This one expect and fifteen is fine. Make general settings page extensible. So talked about it last week. Doing the meeting. And fix the environment on the admin and in. There were some issues, and now they are fixed. Let's change it. We mentioned our settings use. Well, so we can show. And then we get back. It's configured in the background. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. We can't assume that every piece of code now will have to check if, oh, I'm running in the background, so my path is different or whatever, or is it configured or whatever. Fix is this one, but I have to. The virtual folder shall go on up. Okay.
Tentum Zvangla. The number of virtuous labor in the IAS, virtuous labor, and the years of Chalamet. And then we have this one, okay. Okay, so look, nope, that's not how it should work. Then the path base should be an option. The background as read like we can read the what is the name page right. Why do you need to do that? Start doing things like this, then you need to stop doing things like this, which is bad. When we create a service, we should have to check if it's a background or not. Unless it's very specific to background transport. Media store should not care that, oh, I'm going for a background transport. Just here to read files, store files. Done. Shell async is possible. So to explain what I understand is. We need the the path base in this component, like the thing after the domain, um, and before the tenant projects. And you can only get it from the HTTP request. But if, if it's a background task, there is no HTTP request, so we need to get it. So I think that here the, the solution that is used is when this thing is called first, it's empty, but the second time when it's called from the URL, then it's updated or something like that. But I think we should handle that the same way we handle the base URL, which is we define a setting where we inform the tenant that this is the value that it will be requested with. The base line. So something should be done with the request base path. It's okay. Kind of same thing as here, C and base URL. Not really, but most of the same. Uh, shell AC disposable enough. The way to win.
Oh no, that's not. okay. Crystal basing, dot changing service for basing. This is awaiting. So this thing now is async. So this was not async, now it's async. Okay. So that's the change. how how is that how is that any different? What that? Yeah. So we look at the code before. Shell contact is create scope. So it was written in a scope. And this scope calls using service scope async. So in this object, we call using service scope async. The result of that is awaited because this is an async method, this is awaited. So now this method here, create scope, is made async. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it's so like putting wait. that in a different variable, basically. Exactly, yeah. That's, yeah, okay. that's why I was confused also, like, I can't read that. Yeah. Ideally, we should have said, like, var scope equals await, just scope create async. Yeah. And then what's, await, yeah. Yeah, what's nice or what's crazy here is that I actually have a PR that I submitted that actually changes that. Okay. Because so. it's, it's harder to read, yeah. Uh, and then everywhere that it was going. So it's making more thing with this thing. Yeah, the async stuff is viral. And then at some point we'll understand why. But at some point something Is async, so it needs to be called. This is the same thing. Maybe this one. Maybe that's one. And this one, you can see this probably now, so we can dispose it asynchronously, and then, then everything else has to be async. So sad. Update, update benchmark.net. Fix three file names. Match file name. Fancy. Remote. Remote position starter. Why? We just made the types match the file names uh, when possible. It's not the case on everything, but you know that's mainly what we did here. Files. If picture over screen.
Okay, so I assume you have the written changes. No, there is no no changes. Just we're making sure that the file of the class matches the class, the type name that it's in, without changing like anything. This one. Okay. Last not called started. Okay. Uh, remove cycle. Something someone could do someday. So if you if you want and if you test it. Use all these starter classes, they inherit from set of base. They don't have to. They used to have to. But if they don't inherit from anything, um, they can just do something like this and it should work. Like a standard startup file. Oh, but maybe they have because they are not called startup anymore. But if they were called startup, I believe you don't have to inherit from set of base. Maybe, yeah. Or we need to change the convention to say that anything that ends with startup and not is just called startup. If it has like, a, so what we do is that if it has a method void continuous services like this, then we assume it's a startup class and the same way that that does it before we had to implement startup base. So maybe that, that would be nice searches. Not have to inherit from that and have the variety or it's less um, object specific, it's more like this. But the convention today might just be to look for a startup class instead of looking for something that and we start up. I don't remember. Remove type got in project templates. Okay. We never had created errors from views. We mentioned that in triage. That's good. The idea is that now it will pick up actual validation errors instead of this generic error. Interscope tests. Weeks. Because I should this one is initialized with the current scope. Make that one classic and change to can dynamic. Okay, we saw that on the first day in triage, I believe. Or oh, after. So using a single Okay. Um, if it should merge by I use the SMS stuff. Hmm. What about that? Yeah, this is just uh, for debugging if you're doing uh, yeah, writing to console. It's better to use lit log debug and debug right now. So remove that. We need to remove that, please. So instead of console, write it to log. Yes, yes, as debug, yeah, we have that there also. Change that to artist dog. Oh, I okay. I must have put the code when we put the code from the object pool. Interesting. I will change this one because this is coming from the um, oh, just remove it completely. Yeah, 
that we shouldn't start doing it by ourselves. Otherwise, people will do that all the time. Just this one can have login. Can inject the logger and then log as a debug totally fine. This way, when you want to see the log, then you just configure your log and say include well console SMS provider log level debug, and then you see it appearing. Yeah, we'll probably just rename it too instead of it being called console. We'll call it log or something. Oh, I see what you. Oh, good idea. That's a very good idea. And this way to do it will go in wherever the log goes. I need to do that. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's update and update. This one updated also. 2013. Microsoft Identity. Well, I'm sure I did the same thing. As to the entourage, just to be sure. That's what this one. I never knew. Good question. This is this one as new previous. Okay. But I need to keep web. It depends on that. Okay. Good. Shell pipeline in the background. That's to fix the fact. Okay. What is that? So we now have an option in the background attribute and the UI that you can say use pipeline. And if you click it, it by default is off. And if you use it, you can uh, build the HTTP pipeline in the background. So you can use uh, things like generate a URL or whatnot. I don't think that we were. I know I don't really listen to that. This is not thread safe. Well, this is thread safe, but this might be executed multiple. Well, okay, no, that's good. So this can be executed multiple times, even if it's a conditional. But every coder 
should get the same. OK, so that is fine. Because only one will be added. All of them are written the same one. And we don't care about it looking it many times. I believe like the same as for when it's not reference will be um, just garbage corrected, so that's fine, I'm sure. But that's good, perfect. So as a reminder, it's very not intuitive, but a concurrent dictionary can be called concurrently. It won't break. But when you call get or add or add or whatever and that creates things with a lambda on a concurrent dictionary concurrently, it doesn't mean that this thing will be called only once. It means that this thing can be called by all the threads at the same time safely. Only one of the results will be added to the concurrent dictionary and the same one will be written to all the columns. So if you care about this thing, being um, blocked, so I need mean one lambda to be called, and don't do this thing. Just return a lazy thing, and you call dot value on the result. This way, lots of lazy will be created. A single one will be added, and when you call dot value, a single lambda will be. Added. So in this case here, it's fine because it's fine to have this thing be called multiple times even if we return a single one of them, the winner. Even myself understands that, I'm confused by this behavior. And I can tell you, most of the users, they don't know that the compromise cell, when you get or add, this thing will be called multiple times, actually. It can be called multiple times. You don't expect that from a concurrent dictionary. Um, same thing with the memory cache. Same behavior. OK, so this one is to build the pipeline. I'm kind of sad that it is called use pipeline, even in the UI. Because nobody understand, will understand use pipeline. Yeah, he, he did put hints on the UI and the attribute name to make it, even though I disagree with that explanation, but he, he added some hints. This is too technical. We see, yeah. Tells you what it does, not what you, why should, why you should do it. At least maybe, but yeah. But it's a yeah, it's technical thing back on that, so use tenant by plan. Sure, I mean. Even without background task, I want to use tenant pipeline. I mean, every tenant should have a pipeline, but I hope that every tenant uses tenant pipeline. Now, background task, like initialize by tenant pipeline in background task. Okay. And now, tenant pipeline, I'd like to see something else different. Because people don't know what tenant pipeline is. If you tell me tenant pipeline, like what is that? Like middleware pipeline? Or is it the DI also? Okay. Can you sit in? Optimization and not wow. Two snake case.
see some plain code. Select X, I, okay, index. So if it's not the first job, You should see other things later. Then underscore and the letter side. Or the letter inside. And everything to lower. So first we're going to be that. And then this is it. Yep, but all lower. Okay, and so then the first everything goes, lower. then this is lowered by the two lower here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's a snake case. Okay. Yep. The snake case. Then we have camel case, which is this is it. We have Pascal case, which is this is it. We have the bad case. What is the bad case? Find him there. No, cam camel case starts with the lower case and then. The kebab oh. case, the same thing as um, the Thank snake you. case, ah. but with a dash instead of the underscore. And then camel case is different. Yep. First, okay, kebab case is actually the thing I was saying. Okay, so this is. That's good. Okay. Uh, the, the good thing about this PR is we also got rid of the Twilio reference period. So instead of calling using that Twilio package, we're using HTTP request because Twilio package, they initialize their client statically which is not good for multi-tenancy. So I removed it and then, um, you know, and also the way how we register uh, or, uh, yeah, re register providers, mm -hmm. we no longer need to add it to the, um, so you do your to own the container. Well, in this case, yeah, we just basically call the HTTP uh, endpoint directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's only one. We don't really need the whole package just for one call. And the fact that it's static, it's a problem. Now we, ha we would have to worry about registering it and making sure it's not yeah, shared. That's by then. Yeah. Someone should find it. Yeah, uh, an issue in the API because that's bad. Yeah. HTTP client factory. A client. Technical name. That's good. That's good. That's weird. Yeah, that's a weird way to do that. 
works. It's just a really way to do that. Uh, this could be static, by the way. I'll do static when when. So why is it weird? Just so I know. Oh, uh, I I would never have used a hash static setup per se. I would have used maybe uh, an array. There are two values, so. But yeah, that, that I mean. I think that's bad. I wasn't expecting to see a hash. Rate. Maybe that's the best option actually. But usually we use arrays to list possible values of something. It's just a question of, I would say performance, but in this case that, that might just be cool. It might be slower than an array, but we don't care at that point. Some would say, is it sent or to like equals or equals because that's actually make maybe the fastest way. Even if you have an array of stuff, it will have to check in the end if the value is the same, even if you have a hash set, because the hashes might be the same, then it will check the value. So we still will check the value. So if you just have two values, maybe it's actually faster to just say if status equals sent or equals queued, then I'm doing the hash set. Yeah, but here we're also checking or ignoring the case because I don't know what the API might return, right? Oh, so well, I mean, okay, so string dot equals or ignoring your case. Um, yeah, you just have to write it two or three times, I think, yeah. or two times. Yeah, that's. So that's okay. And then if you want to go this way, then make it static because maybe not, maybe you can't. It's not thread safe, but just for a read, maybe it will say it's it's uh thread safe for the operation. It's basically like say stat so it's not hash set. Uh, I think so static makes sense to me. Static. Let's 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 check before because it might not you like dictionary is not thread safe for read operations. So we have to be careful. May seem weird, but it's not. Yeah, but if the value doesn't change. I right? know. And I'm saying still, I understand. And I would say so, but we tried. We did some benchmarks and we tried some. And I believe it's not. We seem like it's failing. Because it might rearrange internally how the keys are organized. and. I, like on the read operation, it does not happen in A, right? Interesting. Uh, ash set, let's say, if ash set, C sharp, I just need to go to the page of the documentation, this one, it should be written. Doesn't save, so it doesn't save. What? It does. It doesn't say that if it's written for one. That's weird because dictionary it will say. Can support multiple readers. Uh, interesting. Good. I so just good did a quick Google. It says it's not thread safe. Uh, quick Google. But, oh, it does say but, in here. So okay. dictionary says it's thread safe on multiple readers concurrently. So that's good. But it doesn't say that for for hash set. It it should be also. But oh, something else you can do then is oh, is use immutable dictionary. So this one will be completely safe, but it's not as fast as a dictionary or a hash set probably. And then. In .NET 8, so FYI, .NET 8 for the elections. So what this one is the best uh, in this case, the best usage because I will zoom in. When so in .NET 8 there are new collections. So when you have a dictionary, for instance, or hash set, you can do dot two thousand set or two thousand dictionary or two thousand whatever, and then it will make an immutable collection out of it, 
that won't change. You can't write anything to it. And you can still do some lookups. And it will be optimized for lookups. So it will be faster than anything else. So in this case, that will be what you will use. The frozen set. Like an array if you want, but optimized for then seeking stuff. So yeah. so two frozen set and then you can search for something. Quick that Google hash set is not thread safe. Very interesting. <laughs> I'm using Bing, is that okay? Say that again. I'm using Bing. Uh, I just did a quick Google uh, result. It tells me right there in the middle. This one. These contents yeah. threat safe. Good, good call. Interesting. I mean, we can switch it to array. So is it like array? It's not. Oh, interesting. So array yeah, it's or, yeah. prefer. Yeah, it's probably better to use concurrent di uh, directory, but I mean, in this case, it's over. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just saying like a, as a, a supplement, but yeah, I would probably switch it to array. Or just say, you know, if the status is or is, <laughs> then we don't have to worry about it. I'll, I'll change it. I'll change it for safer approach. Okay. Good. So interesting topics. <laughs> good back there. Check to make a flag uploads has been merged. Okay, that's just to be able to upload much bigger files using the media manager and the JavaScript code to do that. Right. Less shell script access in startup. Okay. And it works in fix typos. MKT. Okay, good. Demo. Right, you have a demo. Yes. So let me share. All right. Assuming you see my screen now, yeah? Yes. So this demo, it's been kind of talked about before, and we had uh, last time we're talking about a dynamic cache. So one uh, new thing here is that we kind of wanted a way to be able to change the way how this is displayed and the way how your name is displayed, because I don't care about your username. It's too technical, OK? So really, in Orchard, we don't have a way to change that. So I added um, a package. It's a it's outside of um, Orchard Core because I don't know if it's something we want to have in Orchard Core or not. If it is, we can easily bring it in. Uh, but basically, a way to customize that output. And also, you might want a way to use avatars. Okay, so. There's two new features that that my, this package will add. Uh, one of them is for avatar and the other one for display name. So I want to go in and show how the avatar module work real quick. So there is a feature called user avatar. If you enable it and you go to your profile, you will be able to attach an avatar. So here if I select this nerd and save it, and then you'll see that your avatar is up here. Um, and if you look, go click on content items, you will see your avatar right there. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one is changing the whole name. Uh, display, so there's another feature called customizable user display name. If you enable that, you can go to the profile. Now you'll see place you can type in your first name, middle name, and last name. You save it, well, nothing changes because I just updated my first name, last name. But there is a new setting here at, under a configuration settings, and it's called user display name. And here you can change how you want the name to be displayed. In this case, you have three options. 
uh, I thought about maybe at some point we have another option called other, and then you can just put liquid and then have your own uh, format. I know that's uh, probably Sebastian is what you're thinking about. So anyway, so you can change it how you want the format. And if you save it, you will notice that the name changed up here already. And if I go click here, you'll see my name also changed. So it's no longer showing ML Hayek, it's showing Mike L Hayek with my avatar. Um, so the way how this work is also utilize a dynamic caching. So whenever we create one of those, we save it. So this is actually a shape. So it's a cacheable shape. So if we uh, if we run this list or a longer list, we're not re-executing the code and the database every single time. So if I sit here and refresh, 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 I'm not calling another, I'm not making another round trip to database because this shape is cached. This shape is invalidated immediately if you update your profile. So if I go in here and I said, you know, change it to mic two and then save it, now what happened? It will invalidate the cache and generate a new shape as you notice here now my name has two um, and then similarly here this is also a shape that we uh, we also cache so we're we're using the same user instance to create multiple shapes and save it so that way we can reuse it so i thought it's a pretty cool thing to share uh, and like I said, it's available publicly. Just install that. But I don't know if it's something we want to bring into Orchard. You know, Sebastian, you might want to, you know, mention whatever. If, if that's something we want to consider, then I can probably bring in the code. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it. Cool. Uh, I'm not sure I will have added a third option with Liquid. I will just have not added any option, and uh, maybe you have a reason to have first middle last name. I will just have a property called display name. Maybe using liquid also, so you can still use liquid if you want on top of your name. So you could write Michael Ayek, and that's it. Yeah, I mean in the settings right here, like in the display. Uh, yeah. uh. And and for instance, if you really want that the display name is based on the first, last, middle, you could then just add more profile options, like, and then change the display name to be first, middle, last, and maybe something else. So well, so like this is a common, right? Those are like the common things. But yes, you can like. So what I mean is that I don't even have this drop down where you enter the first last middle. Yeah, I just have a display name. Yeah. No, and, and I get it, right? But okay. sometimes you might want to refer to someone by first name or and last name. Sure. Yeah. And know? that's why that's why my second comment, which is still by having the display name in the settings, then if you really want your display name to be first middle last name or to be based on something else then you add these properties to the profile. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could have either first name, middle name, last name, or replace those where, with a new field called display name. Mm -hmm. I personally no. prefer this way. Yeah, but, but because yeah, we can have a feature that say configure it and then whether display here, first name, last name, or just a display name. But at the, at the end of the day, if if you want to go down that route, you probably would have to have it configurable where. Yeah, that's why I'm saying just display name with liquid. That's what I would have done. That's my opinion. It doesn't have to be that way. So in the settings here? Here, in this page. A, in this page. In yeah. this page. I mean, this oh, is a no, user no, you're profile. Right. No, no, you're yeah, right. I don't right. want to do that. No, no, it has to be in the settings, yes. Yeah, display name just being a text box with the. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh. you can do that, and if you oh, do no, that, no, no, whatever no. the user type yes. will be a user display yeah, right. name. You need two things. You need in the in the in the user profile, you need the display name, and then I see. So here, if it's a if it's configurable here, either we display three fields or display one field, 
and the yes, one field so will be yeah. called. So then I will agree with what you said at the, at the beginning, which is Sebastian, let's say, yes, Sebastian would just say use a text box with liquid. Yeah, but again, <laughs> that's that's a that's a, a too technical, I think. So if these oh, are I, the common ones, that's why I put it here. That's why I said if anything, we can have an other option that you can because I mean, what other known formats out there in the world that yeah, are using for the, displaying a name? What right? I'm saying is that textbooks with the default being the most common one, first middle and last name, and then they can change it. And it's in the hint, so it's so so ubiquitous in Ultra that you to do things like this. It's not hard, even. Yeah, no, and, and I get it. I mean, by default, it's a username, which is what we display today. So okay. sure, yeah, we can make it a text box, but I just thought for, for me, it from a user perspective, this is what I think. Okay. Having a, a pre-configured options is much easier than having to understand, like if, if you don't know anything about liquid or orchard, you go in here, okay, now what is this liquid means, right? Now I have to go and understand what liquid before I can modify it, right? But in, in this case, just because these are, it's like 99% of the time, you're going to use one of these three, right? You know, and so, and if we want to have other, then sure, yeah, we can have other. But okay. but I, I like the fact of using a menu just from a user perspective is much easier. From a developer, you know, if you're if you know whoever is going to be consuming your site, is a developer that knows Orchard Core and Liquid, then yes, sure, you can have a text box. But I assume that whoever's using Orchard isn't really, or they're not always an Orchard, you know, developers or, you know, familiar with Liquid. So. Good. So there is already a, a, a shape. For, for the display for, name. Yep, this is the shape. This is, it, is another shape. Yeah, but it's already a shape today. That's why you were able to arrive. No, it's not. And that's so, why uh, in here, you know, right now oh, in Orchard, are, this is oh, what we do. So in order oh, for you to really install it, you need to define this. So because, first thing to do is to change that to make it a shape. Correct. Because in Orchard Core today, we do not have that uh, but I'm as seeing a shape. First thing we need to do in Orchard, forgetting about your feature, is to make it a shape. Yes. So people will be able to even customize it. I mean, it shouldn't Correct. be part of customizable. You see all these things here that you are writing. No, it should be in Orchard already. Correct. But it's not. So because it it's should. not, this it is should. a worker. I, I agree. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I agree. I actually think the whole menu, the user menu, and the login menu should be much more dynamic. Because today, if you look at the code, they're all hard coded. Oh, and uh, yeah, I it's all hard coded. It's not good. They are on the shapes already. Oh, I see the no the menu. Okay, login menu. Okay, okay, I see the thing. Not the login page, but the menu itself. Okay. Correct. The menu itself. It's not. If you go look. Uh, if we look at the code real quick, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, wait, that's not it. That's, oh, yeah. So if you look at this, see all these menus are hard coded here. Okay. You know, it's well, not it's really. Fine. It's fine to have some of the things hard coded because we always want them there. But yeah, but see, we have this right here, right? Yes, so this is good. a this lot is... of this, yeah, a yeah. lot of this should be injected here. And also, see this right here. We should have another shape right in here, okay. which allow us to change the value that we are no, presenting. Fine, yeah. 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 Okay. Fine. Yeah. See, because this check right here, this is not really how we do things in Orchard, right? So if you use some sort of filter to inject whatever you want based on permission, then probably be a code level, not in the view. So like, you know, here, you know, you're checking if you have authentication, right? before you inject it. I mean, this isn't bad because it's part of the same module. Yeah, that's okay. But then you have things here like allow uh, change email, right? You know, yeah, like this right here. Things. It, it should, should be the email module, yeah. Yep, it, it shouldn't be here, right? So that's, okay. that's the thing. So this is not really the best way to write this code, but no. Okay, thank you. 
it's time. We don't have time for more things. I don't have a lot of time for my next meeting. So we we'll end there. Um, see you on Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.